Hi, this is Database Security Lesson. In this lesson, we will learn the introduction to the threats to databases, types of control measures, mandatory access control, SQL injection, and key-based infrastructures. Database security is a very broad area that addresses many issues including legal, ethical, policy and system-related issues. Threats to database result in the loss or degradation of some or all of the security goals such as loss of integrity, improper modification of information, loss of availability, Legitimate user cannot access data objects. Loss of confidentiality. Unauthorized disclosure of confidential information. Database works as part of a network of services. Such as applications, web servers, firewalls, SSL terminators, and security monitoring systems. There are four types of database control measures namely. Access control, inference control, flow control, and encryption. There are three types of access control. Discretionary security mechanisms. Used to grant privileges to users. Mandatory security mechanisms. Classify data and users into various security classes. Implement security policy and role-based security. The measures of control can be broadly divided into the following categories. The access control is handled by creating user accounts and passwords. Inference control must ensure information about individuals cannot be accessed. Flow control prevents information from flowing to unauthorized users. Data encryption. Used to protect sensitive transmitted data. A database administrator, DBA, is a specialized computer systems administrator who maintains a successful database environment by directing or performing all related activities to keep the data secure. A DBA has the central authority for administering database system and owns super user or system account. The DBA privileged commands includes Account creation Privilege granting Privilege revocation And security level assignment In access control mechanism A user must log in using assigned username and password Login session is a sequence of database operations by a certain user. It will be recorded in system log. Database audit is the process of reviewing log to examine all accesses and operations applied during a certain time period. Data sensitivity concerns information that should be protected from an authorized access or disclosure due to its sensitive nature. Several factors can cause data to be classified as sensitive. Inherently sensitive. The value of the data itself may be so revealing or confidential that it becomes sensitive, for example, a person's salary or that a patient has HIV or AIDS. From a sensitive source. The source of the data may indicate a need for secrecy, for example, an informer whose identity must be kept secret. Declared sensitive. The owner of the data may have explicitly declared it as sensitive. A sensitive attribute or sensitive record. The particular attribute or record may have been declared sensitive, for example, the salary attribute of an employee or the salary history record in a personnel database. Sensitive in relation to previously disclosed data. Some data may not be sensitive by itself but will become sensitive in the presence of some other data, for example, the exact latitude and longitude information for a location where some previously recorded event happened that was later deemed sensitive. 
it is the responsibility of the DBA and security administrator to collectively enforce the security policies of an organization. This dictates whether access should be permitted to a certain database attribute, also known as a table column or a data element, or not for individual users or for categories of users. Several factors need to be considered before deciding whether it is safe to reveal the data. The three most important factors are data availability, access acceptability, and authenticity assurance. Typically a trade-off between precision and security. Precision. Protect all sensitive data while making available as much non-sensitive data as possible. Security. Ensuring data kept safe from corruption and access suitably controlled. Relationship between information security and information privacy. Concept of privacy goes beyond security. Ability of individuals to control the terms under which their personal information is acquired and used. Security a required building block for privacy. Preventing storage of personal information. Ensuring appropriate use of personal information. Trust relates to both security and privacy. Now we come to the discretionary access control based on granting and revoking privileges topic. There are two levels for assigning privileges to use a database system. Account level. Example, create schema or create table privilege. Not defined for SQL2. Relation, or table, level. Defined for SQL2. Access matrix model. In relation or table level, each relation are assigned an owner account. Owner of a relation given all privileges on that relation. Owner can grant privileges to other users on any owned relation, such as Select, Retrieval or Read, Privilege on a Modification Privilege on a References Privilege on a Specifying privileges through the use of views. Consider owner of relation R and other party B. A can create view V of R that includes only attributes A wants B to access. Grant select on V to B. Can define the view with a query that selects only those tuples from R that A wants B to access. The video shows an example of SQL command in Oracle for creating a view with specific attributes and granting the view to a user Tom. Revoking of privileges. Useful for granting a privilege temporarily. Revoke command used to cancel a privilege. Propagation of privileges using the grant option. If grant option is given, B can grant privilege to other accounts. DBMS must keep track of how privileges were granted if DBMS allows propagation. The video show an example SQL command for revoking and granting with grant option privilege to Tom. With the grant option privilege, Tom able to grant the view to user Alice. Limiting horizontal propagation to an integer number I means that an account B. Given the grant option can grant the privilege to at most I other accounts. Vertical propagation is more complicated, it limits the depth of the granting of. 
Privileges Granting a privilege with a vertical propagation of zero is equivalent to Granting the privilege with no grant option If a counter grants a privilege to account B with the vertical propagation set to an integer number J, zero, this means that the account B has the grant option on that privilege, but B can grant the privilege to other accounts only with a vertical propagation less than I. In effect, vertical propagation limits the depth of the granting of privileges. Horizontal and vertical propagation limit not currently available in SQL or other relational system. In many applications, an additional security policy is needed that classifies data and users based on security classes. This approach, known as Mandatory Access Control MAC, would typically be combined with Discretionary Access Control. The need for multi-level security exists in government, military, and intelligence applications, as well as in many industrial and corporate applications. Typical security classes are Top Secret, TS, Secret, S, Confidential, C, and Unclassified, U, where TS is the highest level and U the lowest. The commonly used model for multi-level security, known as the bell Padula model. Restrictions are enforced on data access based on the subject or object classifications. A subject S not allowed read access to object O unless class, S, is greater or equal to class, O. This is known as the simple security property. A subject S not allowed to write an object unless class, S, is than or equal to class, O. This is to prevent information from flowing from higher to lower classifications. And this is known as the star property. is illustrated with the simple example of a multilevel relation shown in figure 2. A. Is the original employee tuples. B. Is the appearance of employee after filtering for classification C users. C. Is the appearance of employee after filtering for classification U users. And, D. Is the polyinstantiation of the Smith tuple. Discretionary Access Control, DAC. Policies are characterized by a high degree of flexibility, which makes them suitable for a large variety of application domains. The main drawback of DAC models is their vulnerability to malicious attacks, such as Trojan horses embedded in application programs. The reason for this vulnerability is that discretionary authorization models do not impose any control on how Information is propagated and used once it has been accessed by users authorized to do so. By contrast, mandatory policies ensure a high degree of protection in a way, they prevent any illegal flow of information. Therefore, they are re-suitable for military and high security types of applications, which require a higher degree of protection. However, Mandator Y policies have the drawback of being too rigid in that TA require a strict classification of subjects and objects into security level S. And therefore they are applicable to few environments and place an additional burden of labeling every object with its security classification. In many practical situations, discretionary policies are preferred because they Y offer a better trade-off between security and applicability than mandatory policies. RBAC basic notion is that privileges and other permissions are associated with organizational roles rather than with individual users. Individual users are assigned to appropriate roles. RBAC can be used with traditional discretionary and mandatory access controls. It ensures that only authorized users in their specified roles are given access to certain data or resources. Separation of duties is another important requirement in various mainstream DBMSs. One method in which separation of duties can be successfully implemented is with mutual exclusion of roles. Mutual exclusion of roles can be categorized into two types, namely authorization time exclusion, static, and runtime exclusion, dynamic. In authorization time exclusion, 
two roles that have been specified as mutually exclusive cannot be part of a user's authorization at the same time. In runtime exclusion, both these roles can be authorized to one user but cannot be activated by the user at the same time. The video shows an example of SQL command for creating role named research underscore role and granting the role to user Tom. The slide shows the most common system privileges and object privileges in Oracle Database. The slide shows the syntax to create view and grant statement in Oracle. Many mainstream RDBMSs currently use the concept of role level access control, where sophisticated access control rules can be implemented by considering the data row by row. In role level access control, each data row is given a label, which is us ed to store information about data sensitivity. Role level ACS control provides finer granularity of data security by allowing the permissions to be set F for each row and not just for the table or column. A policy defined by an administrator is called a label security policy. With the worldwide use of XML in commercial and scientific applications, efforts are underway to develop security standards. Among these efforts are digital signatures and encryption standards for XML. The XML signature specification defines mechanisms for countersigning and transformation so-called canonicalization to ensure that two instances of the same text produce the same digest for signing even if their representations differ slightly, for example, in typographic white space. The XML encryption syntax and processing specification defines XML vocabulary and processing rules for protecting confidentiality of XML documents in whole or in part and of non-XML data as well. Electronic commerce, e-commerce, environments are characterized by any transactions that are done electronically. They require elaborate access control policies that go beyond traditional DBMSs. In conventional database environments, access control is usually performed using a set of authorizations stated by security officers or users according to some security policies. Such a simple paradigm is not well suited for a dynamic environment like e-commerce. To protect against data breaches in these systems, a first requirement is a comprehensive information security policy that goes beyond the technical access control mechanisms found in mainstream DBMSs. Such a policy must protect no t only traditional data, but also processes, knowledge, and experience. A second related requirement is the support for content-based access control. Content-based access control allows one to express access control policies that take the protection object content into account.